Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This would be my Guardians of the Galaxy 3 alternate ending deleted scene video. Marvel just revealed a completely different ending which changes a lot of the future of Marvel's big Avengers level crossovers in a lot of the space-based movies, as well as a bunch of cool deleted scenes and details about high evolutionaries past visits to Earth, which they reveal happened during the 80s, so I'll talk about that too. Suddenly Nick Fury is getting so much busier with all these aliens visiting planet Earth back in the 80s and the 90s. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos and careful for spoilers from the movie if you haven't seen it yet because we need to talk about everything, mostly the ending, obviously. Everybody dance! <laughs> but in the theatrical version of the movie, at the end, Rocket finally confronts High Evolutionary after spending years running from him, avoiding him as much as possible. He's meant to be about 15 years old in the MCU in present day, and it seems like based on his level of development when he escaped, he's been on the run for at least 10 years or more. And with the help of the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy, they all tag team him, almost kill him, with Rocket stopping short of double tapping him with his gun just to make sure that he's dead. Gamora even rips his face off, which they use in the movie to make him a little more comic book accurate, because in the comics, High Evolutionary wears a red mask that covers his entire head, mostly to hide the fact that years of experiments and upgrades that he'd performed on himself had totally messed his face up, like his face is messed up in the movie. But in the comics, the big difference is that he did that to himself. In the movie, Rocket did that clawing his face off when he escaped. They also use that in the movie to pay off all the face-off references from earlier in the film because his face literally comes off. So as he's lying there, barely alive and faceless, Rocket decides not to kill him, both to show him mercy, to show how much he's grown as a person, even though he's technically a raccoon, even though it takes to the very end of the movie before he realizes that he really is a raccoon. Fun fact too, he's related to all those baby raccoons that he actually saved. Those are part of the original raccoons that High Evolutionary selected Rocket from. And they want to show that Rocket's not the same bitter, spiteful raccoon you meet in the first Guardians movie. He's way more mature. He started to process his trauma at High Evolutionary's hands. And also the whole idea is that at this point in the movie, after he destroyed his own creation, Counter-Earth, his own actions obsessing over Rocket, had led to the utter destruction of his own ship, the loss of his next level being the race that Philavel Quasar belonged to that he just created, and all the other research and information that he gained over hundreds of years. He's meant to be about 300 years old in the MCU. His actions led to the utter loss of everything he previously owned or created, basically, so he was left with nothing, not even his own face. So killing him would have been a mercy, so it's almost more hardcore to leave him alive. Rocket does leave him alive, and in the theatrical cut, we see all the Guardians of the Galaxy saving Philovel's new race of children, all the animals High Evolutionary had kept for experiments, taking them to nowhere to live. We see High Evolutionary's cube ship completely destroyed, it finishes blowing up, and you never actually see what happened to his body. There was a lot of speculation about this because it's a comic book movie, you don't see his body, it usually means he survives somehow. And here's the thing, Chuck Woody Wooji himself, High Evolutionary himself, actually confirmed this big alternate ending deleted scene. In the alternate ending, they filmed a much more obvious looking scene of Drax carrying the High Evolutionary's barely alive body off of his ship with everyone else the animals, taking him to nowhere. Uh, let me just put it this way. You will be, um, I, I'm hoping you see in an extended version and maybe an alternate ending, <laughs> you know, that we certainly did film, you know. I mean, the whole point is that in Marvel, unless you see someone die, they haven't necessarily died. And even if they do die, what does that mean in a multiverse, right? But the point is that uh, Rocket doesn't shoot me they make a point of saying, why don't you kill him? And he says, no, I'm not going to kill him. And you don't actually see me uh, go down with the ship. So. And if you look at the theatrical cut, at least the version that's playing in theaters right now, you can actually kind of see Drax carrying him really tiny and blurry in the background. But in the scene, he's super small in frame. Everything is exploding all around them. There's a bunch of other characters. So it is pretty easy to miss. Also, there's the idea in the theatrical cut that in the aftermath, the rest of the ending of the movie where Peter Quill names Rocket, the new leader of the Guardians, announces he's taking a break for a hot minute till Avengers Kang Dynasty, at least, goes back to Earth, and the rest of the Guardians all go their separate ways. In the alternate ending version of this, where they made it more obvious that High Evolutionary survived, we would have seen that much more obvious version of Drax carrying the High Evolutionary's passed out body to nowhere, and possibly a quick scene of him during the celebration, still comatose from his injuries. 
The same way they give you a little tag scene at the very end during the dance off, like a montage of all the different characters just to let you know that, oh, they're still alive. Like even Adam Warlock had a scene where he was watching the other Guardians have their dance off. So the fact that High Evolutionary survived raises some questions about his future in the MCU because he's a huge character. Chuck Woody Awuji was a fantastic villain too. His performance, probably one of the best villain performances in a Marvel movie in a long, long time. So even if they'd actually perma-killed him, like even if it was confirmed that he had died, I still would have loved to see him come back as a variant in some future movie. But since this MCU version is technically still alive, I'd love to see him come back in a future space-based movie or bigger crossovers like bigger Avengers level movies with them adapting more of his high evolutionary comic book stories. Because in the comics, he's actually much more involved in the big crossover events. He winds up working with the heroes just as much as he winds up playing the villain in different stories. In fact, a lot of those stories James Gunn borrowed from for the plot of Guardians 3. Particularly Adam Warlock's backstory, like High Evolutionary actually helps him a lot in his backstory. He's the person that upgraded Adam Warlock and gave him the soul gem. He also worked with the Guardians of the Galaxy during the Annihilation storyline against Annihilus and then later the sequel story with the return of Ultron. I just did a big video too about an Annihilus deleted scene because he was actually going to be a big character during the movie at one point. It would have been a much bigger change to the character because obviously Annihilus is a big Fantastic Four character, so I'll link that video in the description below because it's actually pretty cool. This is Chuck Woody Abuji talking about High Evolutionary's time on Earth during the 80s specifically. I visited your planet many years ago. Earth hasn't been my planet in a long time. Your people had wonderful spirit. Mm. The art and music and literature were some of the finest in the universe. In fact, I just found out that you know, reading an interview he did that the High Evolutionary visited Earth in the 80s. I just find that, I was like, oh, that's, I, I wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been useful to me playing it at all because my line is just, I visited your planet years ago. That's, that's all I need. I've been there and seen it. So it sounds like for the movie, James Gunn created all this extra backstory that he didn't wind up telling the actors too much about during the day, just so that it didn't overcloud whatever their scenes were in present day, but is way more stuff that just didn't make it into that theatrical cut. So you have to imagine High Evolutionary with his advanced technology, like he's already hundreds of years old, visiting Earth in the 1980s with Samuel L. Jackson still in his prime, still a young man in S.H.I.E.L.D. Coulson has probably not quite yet become an agent because during the 90s, he was meant to be like a very green, very brand new agent. And even though I don't expect them to address High Evolutionary's time on Earth during the Secret Invasion series, I do think we'll learn more about Nick Fury's history with S.H.I.E.L.D. during the 80s. There was a lot going on in the MCU during that period, mostly Howard Stark still incredibly active because he wasn't killed by Winter Soldier till the 90s. That was also before Janet Van Dyne had been lost in the quantum realm, so Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne were still very active as Ant-Man and the Wasp working with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Peggy Carter, who was also still very active at that point, just a much older version of Peggy Carter. Remember, all the flashback scenes during the time heist in Avengers Endgame at Camp Lehigh were during the 70s, so High Evolutionary on Earth would be even after that. There was another deleted scene that we learned about with a very naked version of Gamora. A lot of you asking, what was she doing? Why was she naked in this scene? This probably would have been when they were changing out of their prison suits after they made it back to the Guardians' new ship, the Bowie, after they'd escaped the giant space butthole. And it was probably part of Peter Quill continuing to pine for her, trying to win her back, because at this point in the movie, he still hadn't completely gotten over that. It wasn't until the very end of the movie when he was like, okay, I'll see you when I see you. We were a lot of fun, and they kind of both went their separate ways being friends. And it's not necessarily a deleted scene, but it's a bit of the subtext of the movie with James Gunn and Karen Gillan, Nebula, talking about this. So Karen Gillan in real life actually said that she feels like Nebula now has a crush on Peter Quill in the last couple of years since Avengers Endgame, but she has no idea how to process it emotionally just because she's been so shooty stabby trying to get over her own trauma the same way that Rocket was getting over his trauma with High Evolutionary, Nebula just dealing with her trauma and her backstory with Thanos was that you were in love with? It sounds more like her. Her? That's Do not bring me into Don't this. <laughs> Knock it off! What? I just never noticed how black your eyes were. They were replaced by my father as a method of torture. He, he picked a pretty set. So I think the whole idea is that Nebula is just starting to open herself to those kinds of emotions and we're not going to see her get together with Peter Quill or anything like that. Like this is just Karen Gillan talking with James Gunn and James Gunn being like, you know what, I hadn't completely intended that, but I do kind of believe it. So it's more of the subtext of the character, like it's not the actual text of the movie. 
And this doesn't mean that Nebula is going to get together with Peter Quill or anything like that. It just means that she's kind of crushing on him a little bit. Whereas previously, she would have never even considered that part of herself. Like, it would have been buried so deeply in her psyche that it would never have been a thing before. There were a bunch of deleted scenes that James Gunn's been posting of Rocket and his friends when he was a child. Like, Lila, there's a child version of Rocket, Teeth, Floor, just all scenes of them figuring stuff out for the movie. And he did reveal that at least two deleted scenes will wind up on the Blu-ray, but he didn't say which ones he's going to put on the Blu-ray. For the most part, he said there weren't a ton of deleted scenes from the movie, like traditional deleted scenes. <laughs> I got finished without laughing. Okay. Right. <clears throat> I'm a serious person. Let's bring up the effects. Coming up. up the, the and stop. But it sounds like there were a couple really big ones, which I mostly list here in like the Annihilus deleted scene in my other video. If they reveal any more deleted scenes, of course I'll do videos for them. We'll get the rest of them by the time they release the Blu-ray later this year. And when they do that, when they release it, I'll give a couple copies away. Really big reminder that I've been doing the Guardians of the Galaxy video game giveaway recently. So be sure to check my Marvel videos for the past week or so to see if you were named as a winner during those videos. There's a bunch of stuff that I'm working on. I'll try to post all those videos as quickly as possible. Everyone click here for my full Guardians of the Galaxy 3 breakdown, Easter eggs, post credit scene, and click here for my brand new Captain America 4 first look video and teaser. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>